I'd been off colour for about a fortnight. Aches and pains, no appetite, lethargy, which I'd put down to indigestion. Then I realised it was something to do with my heart. It was a shock that coincided with my second quarter day, July the 18th. At first I wouldn't accept it, not cast his heart, couldn't be. And then when I couldn't sleep on my left side, couldn't even lie on it, I had to, and spent a whole afternoon walking my beaches and trying to come to terms. Morale was back to square one. But it doesn't hurt. You're not in pain. Not really. I'd like to know what's wrong, though. Stress syndrome, Cart. Nothing organic. You've been too unhappy and too afraid for too long, that's all. Stress syndrome. So no panic. But I did panic. I slept badly on the night of July the 21st. Then I overslept and I woke to a perfect day. Flat calm, like this, but no cloud in the sky. And on the spur of the moment, I decided to cut and run. I hadn't planned it. I wasn't ready, I wasn't fit, and it was mad. I got away about 12 noon. I was hoping for a quick job, 20 hours in the dinghy, a rest at Holmestrunt, 20 hours on ski over the island. But there was so much gear in the dinghy, I had very little leg room for rowing, and probably about six inches freeboard. I pulled out of the cove, through the kelp streamers. When I got outside, I ran into a three-foot lop, knocked me back a bit. Round Duclo Head, leaving the Pickersgills Islands to port. You wouldn't think it, but they're 10 miles off. And came up inside the Frebo rocks. And as I came up inside the Frebo rocks, I started meeting rivulets of brash ice and looking over my shoulder. There still wasn't a cloud in the sky, just that fog bank on a line with Anangoff Island, the big one, and the Pickersgills out on the horizon. By two o'clock, I was past Rocky Bay, coming up to that Chantorp rock, like a little black bun there, feeling rather smug because I was making two knots and that put Holmes Runt within 15 hours. And I looked over my shoulder again, and the fog was on the move. It was cotton wooling across Hauger Strait and rubbing out the flat bannocks of the Hauger Reef one by one. And I spun the dinghy on the next swell and set course for home. And then a most disconcerting thing happened. A leopard seal surfaced right astern, and they're big aggressive buggers. And he practically laid his snake's head on the transom, stared me out. And then took to underrunning me, coming in left as I dipped the oars, going out right as I lifted them. And the oar blades were missing him by inches, and he could have capsized me with a touch. And he stayed with me all the way from Santorp Rock, right the way back into the cove. I damn near wet myself. With hindsight, I'd say that was the first real mistake I made. And I was very lucky to get away with it. If you live at sea level in the sub-Antarctic, you're liable to trespass. South Georgia, it's elephant seals. They haul out to carve and mate in the spring and take over the beaches and move up into the tussock. Calves are no problem. You can see them off with snowballs. Cows turn tail at the prod of a ski stick. Bulls are a different matter altogether. They're in a different class. The largest bull whose statistics I can accept, because I know the man who took them, measured 23 feet, which would make him around five tons. Now, elephant seal bulls, once fornication time is over, 
like to find themselves a hidey hole in the tussock which they turn into a wallow. It was probable tussock camp had been a wallow and would be again, so I'd have to go. And how soon, where to? I had only myself and my friend to ask. So I've got to be off the flat by the beginning of September. There's nowhere to go but the gully and bugger the Eastleys. It'll be a hard job. So I must make it easy, mustn't I, Fran? That means good snow cover and no falling about. So when to move? When would you move, my Fran? You think before the spring thaw? You're right. I can't get around when the going's half and half. How soon, then? No, I do not want to share tussock camp with a bloody great bull, Fran. It's not my style. You should know that. So it's really... Get out while I can. That's about it. Is that what you'd advise? Sometimes, Fran, I wonder how real you are. How real I am to you. I moved up here from the flat on August the 9th. I didn't want to. I'd be exposed to the Easterlies again, but there was nowhere else. I checked the gully out first, using my number two tent, the grey one, as a wind and drift gauge, and it was fine. So I moved up and dug in on the side of first camp, and now I called it last camp. It was quite an excavation. The pit was as deep as the tussock was high, so in theory the wind should blow over the top. And then the spring blizzards came. It snowed the night of the 10th, all the following day and the following night, until there was such a weight of drift on the 10th that the ridge was down to sleeping bag level. And I was propping it up with my knees. By the morning of the 13th, there was a 10-foot cornice overhanging the tent on the weather side, and I had to concede I couldn't keep last camp open. So I dug out tussock camp next day and reoccupied it on August the 15th. And it was the same thing all over again. Only tussock camp was smaller and drifted up quicker. And I was having to pitch the snow away above my head. You see, the tussock's about head high. Now, if you can imagine it wholly snow covered and then afoot, you'll see what I mean. And I went on blizzarding throughout the 16th and that night, throughout the 17th and that night, till I just about had it. <laughs> 